Something I like about these Edelbrox is you can take the top plate off while it's still on the car. So there's the link, there's the fuel line, there's a linkage here for the choke, there's the other half of the linkage for the choke, and then you have the accelerator pump. And other than that, the whole top plate is com can come right off. Just gotta take off all these screws. Luckily, most of them are the same length, with the exception of maybe one or two. So we'll keep track of that. Ooh. All right, we gotta get the gasket off. It's stuck. Come on, gasket. There we go. All right, well, it was this this other side that was giving us tr problems. But you can see all this nasty stuff inside of it. We'll probably just clean that stuff out before anything. Yeah, it's got some gross in there. So yeah, we'll clean that out. See what we can do putting it back together. We'll free up these seat, these needles, so that they uh, they move. When I first started the car, I felt like there was a chance the carburetor would run, run you know, somewhat decent, but. After looking inside of it, I just think it's time for a rebuild. So you can see the insides are pretty dirty in the float bowls. I actually wiped some of this out, but I mean this, all this crap is inside the float bowl. And especially down there, you can see it. It's like that varnish kinky stuff. Anyway, this is what happens to gas whenever it, uh, gets old. It becomes pretty much the sludge stuff and no gas is going to flow in this carburetor at all if it's full of that. So I'll be taking it apart I and mean, you can see even on the bottom of this um, accelerator pump there's a bunch of goo in there too. The other thing is the, the needles inside of these seats they don't move when the floats drop so that's a problem. I'm sure these jets are going to be full of garbage it all just needs cleaned out and blown out and pretty much soaked for at least a day. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll clean it out and, and soak it and see what I can see what I can do with it. Uh, I have a kit for it, so the, at least all the gaskets will be brand new. But these run pretty well once they're rebuilt. In addition to all the gaskets being pretty much super brittle, let me show you something. So here on the left, if it will focus on the right, that hole right there, you can see there's a little passageway in there. If you look at this one, you can see this one is all clogged up with trash. Not to mention everything else in here all just needs to be soaked and blown out. It's never going to run right if all these little holes are full of rust or varnish or who knows dirt, who knows what. But it all needs to, it all needs to get cleaned up. I have the pieces out of the uh, carb chem dip. They sat in there for about 24 hours. These pieces cleaned up really nicely. Uh, these little ones, I think, because they're toward the bottom. This one, eh, it still needs a little bit of cleaning. But you know, the bot, the sledge in the bottom of the float bowl is not too bad of a an issue. But um, I didn't soak the top plate because there's really nothing in there other than a fuel rail. Nothing else happens. There's no passages to clear out. But, you know, they cleaned up really, really nice. I'm expecting it to run really nice. So now it becomes, it becomes the task to put all the stuff back together. I got a kit, and we should be good to go.
It's a little cold out, but I need to get this stuff out of the garage, not in the garage. All right, we got it to idle down. We're getting oil starting to come up on the center center rocker, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna wait until all of them do that. <laughs> Here on the passenger side, we have oil on all of them. Here on the driver's side, we have oil on all of them. So it took probably a minute for all the oil to get up uh, this high, but they weren't clacking or clattering or anything like that. I don't know what gauges work and what don't. The tack works, that's cool. I'm gonna go ahead and, and get my uh, timing line out, check the timing, look at the idle. Alright, so I have the timing set uh, 7.45 or so. Uh, I might adjust it up or down. Uh, the reason why I pulled the gun out is so I could check the timing. I highly doubt this shows up on video, but I set it to, to 11 degrees before top dead center. Um, it just runs a little bit better like that. The weird thing though is that I left the idle the way it was, the way the carburetor came, which got me wondering, well, how is this thing even running normally? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. How was it running before? Alright guys, well I'm going to end this video here. Um, as you saw, the, the engine runs really good, especially for sitting as long as it had. And really, it just needs some run time. Uh, the plan on this car is we need to do the cooling system, we need to do transmission seals, but also we need to do brakes. I can't really do any kind of testing or driving of it because there's zero brakes. I mean zero. The pedal goes all the way to the floor and nothing happens. I mean, you can't even pump it and get this up. There's no fluid at all. So I'm going to end the video here, but I'm going to give you a quick preview of the next one where we do brakes. Check this out. There's not even brake pads. On any of these wheels, there's not a single brake pad. So the car is going to get all new calipers, uh, pads, master cylinder lines, you name it, it's going to get it. So that will be in the next video. But thank you guys for watching.